Hi, my name is Dev Monikam, and I'm here to talk about mastering the art and science of product marketing. In the previous video, we covered messaging and positioning. And today we're going to be talking about buyer persona. Buyer journey reimagined. Let's actually learn about the buyer journey. What does it take to go from discovery to advocacy? As a product marketer over 10 years, I've had the fortune of working with startups as well as Fortune 500 companies. And this is something that I've learned over my career. When you think about the buyer journey, you have heard different ways, awareness, consideration, decision, the funnel that exists, the flying wheel, if you will. But what I found valuable is something that's simplified enough that I can explain in simple terms. So discover is the first step. This is where you have everything from initial content. Second is learn. This is where you have information about what your product is, what your solution is on your web page. You may have a video, you may have an intro webinar, all good stuff to learn more. Third is try when you have a demo or a product webinar. The fourth is buy when they finally decide that they're ready to buy the solution. That's when they're looking at customer reviews or community to know how others are using the product today. And then last but not least, oftentimes as product marketers, we think that our job is done once we've gotten to the decision phase. But for the buyer, when they become an advocate, that's when your true success comes and you are actually helping create the next customer success story and creating that word of mouth and advocacy that you always yearn for to make sure your product keeps growing. So we all love a good story. A good story has a compelling start to hook your interest, the right amount of suspense in the middle to keep you going and an end you'll remember forever. Stories have been told for centuries Yet it is an art to master the skills of good storytelling and to lead the process with impactful and truthful conversations. We all like brevity and getting to the point, but that shouldn't stop a good story from taking its full form and its full potential. So I've heard this great uh, story from a TED talk and I wanted to bring that back with you. So what's your favorite story? Which story do you really connect with? Let's actually peel it up a little. Let's look into a good story framework and map it to the buyer journey. Start, make it worth the time to care. Every prospect is going through a phase of the buyer journey and they've done their due diligence before they have reached out to you. It's not a linear process, but every customer is on their own journey and has a different way to connect with you. So tell a compelling story to bring them into your universe and walk through the transformation together. Step one, start. Make it worth the time to care. This is where your discover and learn phase of your buyer journey comes to life. When we narrate our story to customers and users, we need to be mindful of our customers' time and effort. We need to introduce new users to the company, the technology, and also find ways why they signed up in the first place, why they got to where they are today. Get them excited about the discovery and tell them why they need to explore the solution and have a conversation. Think about the experience that you resonate most with. That's one way to bring it together. Then is the middle. Gain your trust and credibility. You need to make sure that when you think about competition, maybe there are different ways to assess how good your company is compared to the competition. I've been inspired by GitLab's transparency about this. And because of it, I think as leaders, we should rethink how we tell our story to the world. Are we being true to ourselves? Are our customers understanding the value that we bring? And oftentimes customers and partners know more than we think. They can be 
given the confidence when you are the trusted advisor versus a vendor trying to sell a product. Don't let that happen. Don't let that happen to you. And then the last but not least is your end. Find your true storyteller, your advocates, the ones that will be there for you when everything falls apart. They are there championing for you when you are there to help them. That's where you want to get to. So make sure you're thinking about your storyline in the same way. So let's actually go further. Take a look at all the websites that are there. What do you want your website to tell? For decades, our websites have had a defined structure. We start with a home page. We have a number of other pages, about pages, contact pages, primary pages, secondary pages. A web visitor is expected to try and find what they're looking for. Today, our websites are structured based on different departments that exist in a company, maybe not as cohesive an experience for the web visitor. So instead of expecting them to search and find information, what if we reimagined our website? What if we focused on the right metrics where maybe we didn't really need a top navigation or the typical set of pages? What if the website was developed to tell the story less about the company and more about how the website can help them? Build it for your primary target audience. And that's where you actually go into what a buyer persona is and how to understand how they can provide the value. Focus on your customer needs. Focus on their pain points and then architect your website according to them. Make that conscious effort to be that trusted voice. Content reimagined. Resonate with the buyer. We often say that content is king, but often fail to look at the implications of how we define and structure content. I'm deliberately avoiding the word strategy because it is so overused. Just adding the word strategy does not make our work any more important. We should add significance where needed and remove the clutter and noise. We need to prioritize and clean our resources. Instead of adding new content and flooding the website with more content, what if we made a conscious effort to keep only relevant content at all times? It's clean. It's your spring cleaning every time. Focus and prioritize on every single piece of content. Ask the question, how many types of content do you need? Do you need an asset, a blog post, a social media post, a video? All of this to make your website worth it, make it consumable? Or are we really being honest with how information is being consumed today? Maybe there are different ways to think of it. Maybe a podcast is better. There are different ways how your audience is consuming information to so actually get that information from them. That goes back to your buyer persona. How do you define and establish who your buyer is? As you rethink your website design, that's your front door. Also think of how deep into the house do you need the visitor to go to get the information that they're looking for? Or can you actually step in and help them? Those are all great ways to think of it. Don't let information overload be the constant struggle. We need to keep a clean front yard and a minimalist or essentialist house just so that we have the right content at the right time for them. So take the same example and expand it further, whether it's um, messages that you have on social media, whether it's a podcast, whether it's videos, reimagine how you can expand these experiences and how we interact with our audience. Truly inspire them and make an impact without the boundaries that we have set for ourselves, the limitations that we have set for ourselves. Ask the question, what's the right time and right place in that buyer journey? Open your door to a new world of possibilities and challenge the norm. Ask why we do what we do and why is it done that way? Trust me, amazing sparks of creativity and innovation will unfold. So going back to the buyer journey, simplicity at best. Know your target audience, define your profile, their motivations, their intent, why are they here? What are they looking for? Understand your customer pain points and then establish your value proposition. This goes back to the messaging and positioning exercise that we talked about. And also know what are the key stories, the key messages that really resonate with them. If you have any quotes or industry proof points to add, include that in the profile. 
This is how you can create a buyer persona, one that you can actually hold on to and one that will help you establish the real value proposition. And after you've created your buyer persona, map it back to MedPick, which is metrics, economic buyer, decision criteria, decision process, paper process, indicating pain, point, competition, and your champion. These are all great ways to dissect the information that you have and actually identify how this maps to the buyer that you're talking about. Remember in messaging positioning, we talked about your decision maker and your champion. Your decision maker is the economic buyer here. Your champion is the one that's actually there to make the influence and give you the direction that you need. And then we also talked about pain point. This actually MedPick allows you to put the pain point together in one location. All of this information is valuable as you're looking at your initial um, sales, the first customers that you want to get. This will give you something concrete to help you establish the next five steps to get to the first hundred customers, the first um, sale, and also help you iterate and find your product market fit. So definitely leverage these resources and feel free to reach out if I can help you in any way. My name is Dev Manikam and you can find me on LinkedIn or Polywork as well as Growth Mentor. And you can read some of my work on Substack, devmanikam.substack.com. Here are some of the resources that I've shared, Mastering the Art and Science of Product Marketing, Experience Reimagined, Beyond the Boundaries of Marketing, the Art of Storytelling with Trust and Truthful Conversations, Messaging and Positioning, A Customer Journey. Thank you all for your time today and have a great evening.